How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome to another dynamic projectile video. So in the last video, we made our dynamic projectile system. We can shoot and we can control our weapon type. And before we get into doing other weapon types like rockets and lasers and fun stuff like that, what we're going to do is we're going to add a bigger impact effect to the bullet that's being shot. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our weapon and we're going to add an instance variable and we're going to add an instance variable called knockback and we're going to give it the initial value of 0.1 this is going to be 0.1 pixels that it's going to move our character and weapon back from so if it was actually like one pixel it's going to move it back a whole lot so keep that in mind so let's go to our event sheet here and what we want to do is as you can see here i kind of already grouped this together here so group together your uh, your actual code for when you're triggering your X pressed or is down and We're actually gonna have to eventually separate this for certain weapons But for right now this is gonna work fine But what we're going to do is we're going to take this event and we're gonna hit B on the keyboard So you're not taking the is shooting sub event You're taking the main event and that way you're creating another sub event just like our is shooting here And what we're going to do is we're gonna actually double click on this and we're gonna go into our player and we're gonna type in is mirrored and hit okay. And then we're gonna copy and paste and then we're gonna right click and invert this one. So if it's not mirrored. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the knockback. So to do this, we're gonna say add the action in our is mirrored of our player to move forward. When it moves forward, we're going to move it forward a certain amount or in pixels. And we're gonna say object web dot knockback. So 0.1. And if it's not mirrored, we're going to control click this and we're going to double click to edit this and we're going to say negative. So we're going to put a minus sign in front of object web dot knockback. So now our knockback is stuck at 0.1, but for other weapons such as our machine gun, we're going to want it to be a little bit more intense. So let's go here into our weapon type machine gun, add the action of our object web to set the value of our knockback to 0 0.2. So that way for every single weapon, you can set the knockback and you can actually get more control over it. But for right now, this works per perfectly fine. So let's hit play and let's look at this. So if I hit X here with my pistol, there you go. You can see I'm moving back at uh, 0.1 pixels. And if I go the other way, it's working. If I hit B on the keyboard, change my weapon, there we go. I'm going a little bit faster and that's going to, in the end, actually add a harder impact to your game. So let's exit out. And I noticed that we're only setting the player to move with uh, our knockback. We're not setting the weapon. And since we're kind of setting it and the every tick for our position to be there, it's kind of getting offset. So to fix that, let's add the action of our weapon and let's do the same thing. Move forward, except this time, instead of typing in uh, object web, since it is object web, let's just type in self dot knockback and then let's hit okay let's control click and let's edit this one and say negative self knockback and let's hit play again and check that out so you might come across the fact that our bullets are still a little bit slow here and we might want to make them faster and to do this we can actually just edit the actual bullet behavior speed so Instead of having our bullet speed at 100, if we select our bullet and we go down to our speed parameter here, we can just change this to something like 150. And that way, when I hit save and play, you can see that our bullet's going to act a little bit faster here that I can't catch up to it. And you can keep messing around with that number and changing it. And this is our machine gun here. And you can just keep changing it until you're happy with it. And you can also mess around with the rate of fire that we went over in the dynamic projectile system video. Okay, so now let's actually add our screen shake. Now this is something that is really important to the impact of the game because when you're shooting your bullet, the screen shake is going to just move your camera as if you were watching a movie or something like that. And it's really going to trick your mind into thinking that the thing that you're doing is real and that's what the screen shake really comes in handy with so to do this let's double click and make a new sprite and i'm going to just quickly make a camera object so i'm just going to actually fill this in 
And then I guess I'll just go for an alpha of zero here. And I'll just go, let me take my rectangle tool and kind of fill this in. It doesn't really matter what this object is because, okay, it does matter what size the object is. Let me just change that to 16 by 16. And let's call this our object camera. And the reason why it doesn't matter what the sprite is because our initial visibility will be invisible. So it'll be here, it just won't be seen. So then what we're going to do is we're going to actually give it the behavior of, uh, not shake, what am I thinking of, scroll to. I'm gonna give it the scroll to behavior. And now if we go into our event sheet here, we have to create a new function. So let's double click, let's make a new function and let's call this screen shake. And on the function, we're going to say object camera, scroll to behaviors, shake. Now the first is our magnitude, which is how much it will shake, the strength of it. And our duration is how long it'll shake for. Now we want these numbers to be kind of slow. We don't want them to be these big numbers here. But regardless, what we're going to do is we're going to type in this. We're going to say function dot param zero. And then we're going to say function dot param one so now our magnitude is equal to our first parameter and our duration is equal to our second parameter because you start counting from zero so if i hit ok here we're done with our screen shake function but now let's go to our weapon type and for our pistol we still want to have some kind of screen shake here so let's say for our pistol what we're going to do is actually call the function and we're going to say screen shake and we're gonna add the parameter, and parameter zero is our magnitude of five, and we're gonna add another parameter of our duration, and we'll put that for 0 0.2 seconds here. Now, we need to do one more thing, and we need our camera to always follow our player. So let's go into our every tick here, and let's say camera, and we can do this a number of ways. Uh, let's just set the X and Y, or in other words, let's just set the position to be our player. And we don't need to do uh, our player dot X, my bad. Player dot X, and let's go object player dot Y. We don't need to do anything fancy right now. We can just set it up so it will follow it. And if we hit play there, there we go. So now when I shoot the, the pistol, we have this wonderful kind of crazy almost, it might be a little too violent, our screen shake effect. And that's something that you really wanna have. And we're gonna to have to talk about this in another video, but when we add sound effects, it's really just going to bring all of this together. And I'm sure at this point, you can go ahead and find sound effects, but you can add additional sound effects, which we will do. We'll add one for the gun, one for the screen shake, maybe an explosion. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to lower the magnitude because the magnitude is kind of too much for a pistol. And let's hit play again and let's see how this works. There we go. I'm very happy with that for my pistol. And let's control click this function. And for our machine gun, we can have it be four, our magnitude of four. I wanna have the same duration because I don't want it to last too long unless we're having an explosion or something like that. So when I hit B, there we go. Now we have this ridiculous effect and this might be a little bit over the top here, but now you can actually get an idea as to how you might go about making knockback and screen shake and how much it impacts when you shoot. And again, if you add sound effects, it's just going to complete the overall effect. And when we add more and different kinds of bullet types, it's just all going to come together with these two things. So that has been it for this video. I do hope you learned a lot. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I am Jeremy Alexander, and I'll see you guys in the next video.